greatest day in history. Death is beaten, you have rescued me. Sing it out, Jesus is alive. The empty cross, the empty grave. Life eternal, you have won the day. Shout it out, Jesus is alive. You know, happy Father's Day to all of our fathers. Happy Father's Day to all of you men who, who uh, take on the role and the position of a father from time to time. Thank you for being here. We want to welcome you that are watching us by Facebook or YouTube. We want to say happy Father's Day to any of the fathers that are watching us. And we just say welcome, welcome, welcome to Freedom Worship Center this morning. It's our desire that something we say or something we do will minister to you today. How many agree with that? Amen? Hey, we're going to have you to move around, shake some hands. If you miss somebody or you haven't seen someone, make sure you get to them. Just don't go to the same two people you go to. Go to a few new people today. Can we do that? Let's go, Jess. There you go. And oh, happy day, happy day. You wash my sin away
us a hand clap of praise. He's worthy. You may be seated this morning for a few moments. Anyway, a um, couple announcements. Uh, don't, we had to move the yard sale that we had planned for this last Thursday, Friday, Saturday. We had to move it. We had a uh, Jenny uh, Renner, who is uh, kind of the one that, along with Uncle Ron and Shirley, head up the yard sale. And her dad passed away this last Wednesday. And so, um, so we had to cancel this week, but, or last week, the yard sale, but we've rescheduled it. It's this Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. So make sure you, uh, I don't think they need you to bring anything else. No. But you can come and take a whole lot of it with you back home, somewhere else, whatever. Donate it to a friend. We don't care. Just come and get a bunch of it. Um, so don't forget that. Um, also, the visitation for Jenny and uh, for her, I mean, not Jenny, but her dad, um, is this evening at 4 to 8 o'clock at Bethel Chapel. And then uh, tomorrow afternoon will be the funeral at 1 o'clock. So uh, if you can, you got time, run over there this evening and, uh, and let Jenny know that as her and John are a part of our church, leading our youth, let them know that they are uh, in our prayers and our thoughts. You can do that. I appreciate it. Um, next Sunday, the 26th. Everybody say, next Sunday, the 26th. It is the tide. How many remember what the tide is? It's the, it's the Sunday night uh, outdoor concert at the Civic Park down by the theater. And, uh, and so it's something that different, different churches, different organizations are putting together so that we can have a night of uh, singing and worship and, and celebration our Lord inside the park. And now, this may not attract a lot of the younger crowd that's here, huh? I like it. But some of the older ones will probably really like this. Steve Davis is going to be there. You say, well, who's Steve Davis? He is an Elvis Presley impersonator. And he's going to be there as Elvis Presley singing church hymns, hymns from the church. And so that's going to be really cool. So come and be a part of that. It starts at 6 o'clock. And uh, they actually have uh, water and soda and popcorn and hot dogs and stuff like that that you can come down. Or you can bring your own cooler and bring what you want. And just a large chair and come and have a good time and check out Steve Davis. Amen. Praise the Lord. That's some neat things happening. Amen. Yeah. You're exactly right. If you've, if you've ever seen Steve Davis, he is by far, I believe, one of the top Elvis personators uh, I have ever seen. Not that I've seen tons of them, but he is the best one I've ever seen. I, I have to say, Bobby, I have to say this. I'm probably shooting my foot here. But we're, Steve, we had him at the nursing home out here. He showed up. He shows up as Steve Davis. He's dressed in just regular street clothes. He comes, I'm here representing Elvis. I'm setting, got to set everything up, get it ready for him, make sure everything's good. I'm going to set up his PA system. I'm his roadie, and uh, I'm doing everything. And so he, uh, he says, he said, so my friend Elvis will be here in a few minutes. And it's funny, and I'm like, it's you, right? <laughs> but he talks like, Elvis is in the wings waiting to come out on the stage and he goes. Am I right, Bobby? You've, you've dealt with him before. So he goes off, gets his costume on, his Elvis jumpsuit thing, all the sparkly stuff hanging all over it. Comes out there with his sash around his neck, his hair all greased back and the music starts. And, and when, he, when he says, I want to thank my friend Steve Davis for coming and setting everything up and getting everything ready. And I just laugh and laugh and laugh. It's so funny. But he is very talented. And, uh, and, so, and, and so when Brother Roy Boyer asked him to do this, he said, I want, not Elvis Presley, all his, you know, hunk of hunk of burning love and all of that. Can you just do church hymns? 
And so he said, yeah, you know, like Peace in the Valley and all those good things that Elvis made albums of. So if you want to come and be a part of that, it'd be kind of fun, kind of a neat night to get out in the enemy. Praise the Lord. Amen. Stand with us this morning. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer. Just, just a little FYI, my family and I are leaving tomorrow uh, not early morning, but tomorrow morning we're headed to Steelville, Missouri. We're going to be on a little mini vacation for about four days. And someone said, you're not going to Branson? And I, no, no Branson this trip. Uh, but we're going, I'm roughing it, Bob. I am. I've, I've rented a cabin that sleeps 12 people. It has AC and TV and all of that. I'm roughing it. So, amen. So that's, that's how you camp. That's how you camp. Anybody agree? Yes. Jolene, you agree with that? That's how you camp? Yeah. My idea of roughing it is staying in the Motel 6 instead of Holiday Inn. So that's how I look at it. So anyway. But we're going to have fun. So if you need anything, call Pastor Bobby and uh, he'll, help, uh, he'll help get whatever you need supplied or whatever. And Cole Renner, our worship, our youth pastor, is going to be here and do the Wednesday night service. So that would be pretty cool. He's going to do worship, and he's going to be preaching as well. So amen. That would be pretty cool. So amen. We want to remember uh, Jenny Renner's family. Eldon Ray was, was her dad's name. Uh, a lot of you know him. He's, he's just a great, you knew him, didn't you, Daryl? Super, super man of God. And uh, and uh, he's, I'm sure he's shouting on the hills of glory today. So, hey, but remember Jenny and, and that family today, her siblings and all of them as they go through today and tomorrow that God would just comfort them and put arms around them. Uh, remember Jerry Wolf family. Uh, Sharon Wolf, a lot of you remember J Jerry and Sharon. Uh, Sharon passed away last Monday. Uh, her funeral was this last Thursday. And uh, so the family still needs our prayers. Let's still keep praying for them that God would comfort them. Uh, Sharon said her sister, Beverly, right, uh, has broke some toes on her foot and is having all kind of problems. So ask if I would remember her in prayer. If you have a need, something you want us to pray with you about, would you just lift your hand this morning? God knows every situation. He knows every need. Amen? Let's go to the Lord in prayer today. Can we do that? Lord, I love you today, and I'm so thankful. God, that we can be in your house and be where you're at, God. You're here. We brought you with us. Your presence is here. We've already felt it just a few moments that we've been here in this atmosphere. We can sense your presence. We pray, God, that you would touch every heart, touch every life. Lord, those who are at home watching this or maybe they're on the road and they're watching this, wherever they might be, God, I pray that you would touch them today. Something we say or do or the songs we sing or the sermon that will be preached, we pray, God, that you would just minister greatly and mightily in this place today. I pray, Lord, now that you would be with Jenny and her siblings and that family. I pray, Lord, you continue to be with Jerry and, and Shannon and, and, and Derek. Lord, I pray that you would be with them and those grandkids to continue to comfort them today. I pray, Lord, that you would be with Beverly, that you would touch this foot. I pray, God. Lord, we're just asking you and believing you for for healings, good reports. We're believing you, God. You saw every hand lifted. You know every need that is represented by that lifted hand. We pray, God, that you would move and minister and have your way. We thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Our ushers are coming to take our Sunday morning tithe and offering. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Brother Darrell, would you ask God's blessing on our offering today, please? <coughs> do one song. After the first song, after this next one. Then I want to do the Father's Day thing.
the God who evermore will be. He opened the prison doors. He parted the raging sea. My God, He holds the victory. quick. Um, Bobby, come down and help me. We want to uh, honor all of our fathers today, and uh, we want to recognize them. So if I'm going to ask all of our dads, all of our fathers that's here, come and, and, uh, and stand down here in the front. You, got, you, you, you were here just a few weeks ago, and we did this for the women, so let them be the example again on how you do it. Don't look at me. Turn and look at the crowd. How's that? Look at the crowd. Check them out. Come on, Bob. Amen. All of our dads. Tom, come on down here. Amen. You got three fur dogs. That's that hey, right there. You got fur babies. That's that's pretty good. Fur dogs. Amen. A fur dog. You got a fur dog. And yeah, that's that's better than a hairless fur dog. Whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. What what a good looking group, of guys. Here, come on, join together here a little bit. Glenn's probably having fun with the camera back there, so move, move closer, move, tilt the room some way. Hey, we, uh, we basically did what we did with the ladies. Uh, we got $10 gift cards, uh, some of them for Little Caesars, some of them are for Sonic. And let me just say, if you don't want the Sonic ones, you can donate those to Pastor, because that's my favorite place to eat. And... Uh, 
Yeah. Why don't we have plenty, plenty, plenty of gift cards? Uh, why don't all the men come? You, come on, Matt. Come on down. You're Chris. Come on, Chris. Glenn, can you not? You you got to stay back there and run the thing. Okay. Amen. These are these are men. They they you know. Men of our church, uh, we we didn't do this with the women, but later I did go to some of the ladies and give them gift cards that uh, weren't necessarily mothers, but we gave them. So, is that cool or what? All right, but anyway, some of these are Sonic, some are Little Caesar, some are Dairy Queen, and let's see, I, where was another? Oh, Chick Fil A. So, anyway, so everybody gets gets a card. I don't know if you don't like what you get, you can trade with the guy next to you. Uh, there's bargaining. You can maybe tell them to add a little bit. Anyway, there, there's a little initial up in the corner. Huh? No Walmart. No, Walmart. no, no Walmart. That's just for mom. That's the only one. Oh, yeah. Take Glenn one. Let's see. Here, give him that one. The rest are mine? <laughs> Ron said, the rest of them yours? It's going to be a happy vacation. Only thing is, none of these places will be there. So, anyway. Anyway, so. Uh, you take, I, I'm going to take, I'm taking one for myself. You take one. I won't tell you which one I picked. <laughs> Guess which one I picked. Chick-fil-A. Chick I don't go to Chick-fil-A. <laughs> I'm probably the only AG person that did not, that did not go to Chick-fil-A. Huh? I go to Sonic, that's right. No, not yet. I'm going to have... Huh? I'm going to let you pray for all of the fathers all right. today. Praise that? the Lord. Let me, let me be a yes. father in here too. Come on, Bobby, get in. Father, I thank you that we have the opportunity to come together in your house in your name. And I, ooh, I sense your presence this morning strong. Yes, your anointing. And I just thank you for every man that's up here. And I ask a, mm, a powerful move of your spirit in their life, anoint and lead them and bless them, guide them, prosper them, Lord, yes, according Jesus. to your will and your word, lead and guide us by your Holy Spirit today. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Everyone say amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Now give all of our fathers a hand clap of praise. You may be seated now. Now Jesse and is going to come back and keep going. Here, stand with us. Jesse's going to lead the worship.
now I see your grace changes everything by the cross I am free your grace changes everything I was blind now I see that your grace we have lost as we look down the road where all the prodigals have walked and one by one the enemy has whispered lies and led them off as slaves but we know that you are God yours is the victory we know there is more to come than we may not yet see so with the faith you've given us we step into the valley unafraid we call out to try bones come alive come alive we call out to death God of unrelenting love, rescue every daughter, bring us back the wayward sons, and by your spirit breathe upon them, show the world that you alone can save, you alone can save, but we call out to try bones come alive.
rest or come alive. Lord, we just make that our prayer right now, Lord. We, t we pray for those bones, Lord, that you shake and rattle us right now, Lord, that you may bring us back to life right now. Lord, we just stand in your presence right now. The splendor of the King Clothed in majesty Let all the earth rejoice All the earth rejoice He wraps himself in light And darkness tries to hide and trembles at his voice and trembles at his voice how great is our clap of praise. He's worthy this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You may be seated this morning. If you have your Bibles, turn with us to Judges chapter 3, verse 31. It is Father's Day, so I wanted to preach a message uh, talking about a, a gentleman, a man in the Bible. Um. His name is Shamgar. How many of you have ever heard of Shamgar? Do I hear anybody? Here, gonna hear anybody over here? Got it? Nobody's heard of Shamgar. Well, where have you been? I just talked about him. 
Don't be embarrassed because if you never heard about him, Shamgar is only mentioned twice in the Bible. How many is feeling better about yourself now? And both times you read about Shamgar, you read about him in Judges chapter 3, verse 31. And this is what it says. Glenn stepped out. So I'll just have to read it to you. Take my word. This is what it says. And after him was Shamgar, the son of Anath, which slew of the Philistines 600 men with an ox goat. And he also delivered Israel. That's it. That's Shamgar. That's... Now you've heard of him. So now if somebody says, have you ever heard of Shamgar? You can say, yes, I've heard of Shamgar. Shamgar is the third of 13 different judges. That's what the book of Judges is. There was 13 different judges. Before they had judges, they had Joshua. Before they had Joshua, they had Moses. And so it was like he was their leader. Led them up to the promised land. Not into, but up to the promised land. And then Joshua leads them into the promised land and throughout the promised land. But Joshua, how many understands that you get to a certain point in life and you say goodbye to this old world and you say hello to the new one? Joshua passed away. And so there was no leader over the people of Israel. Nobody was over them other than God, but nobody was the voice of God. Nobody was speaking on God's behalf to the people. And now, because they have entered into the promised land, they've scattered everywhere, all over Canaan land. And so what happens is when you get to the book of Judges, you begin to find that there are 13 different individuals. They're not kings, they're not queens, they're not national leaders. These are God's champion. That's who they are. And they were used to rescue and deliver God's people from the oppression of the enemy. Shamgar is one of these 13 champions. One out of 13, he's a champion. His story is on the pages of Scripture very briefly. In fact, one verse, verse 31. And we know, all we know is that his father's name was Anath and that he single-handedly overpowered 600 men of the Philistine army. His weapon was not a sword, was not a, do, 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 you know, machine gun. His weapon wasn't a grenade. His weapon was a stick. Now, how many would be willing to go to battle against 600 men by yourself carrying only a stick? It's got to be a good stick, right? It's a stick. They call it an ox goad. It was an instrument used by farmers. People who grew plants. People who raised stock. People who worked in the farm. Agriculture. It was an instrument used by farmers. It was not an instrument used by warriors. Are you hearing me? Nobody would have ever thought of going to battle with an ox goat. Nobody would have ever given that even a thought while it was a stick in most people's hands. In the hands of Shamgar, it became a lethal weapon. <laughs> See, it's just worth noting here. I just want you to be aware of this. That throughout the book of Judges, when you read about these great champions, the weapon that all of them used was self-made. 
It, was, it wasn't a sword. It wasn't a, one guy made a dagger, made a knife. Ehud. He made his own dagger. He went in and stabbed this, this king of the city. He went in and stabbed him. And it drove the knife in so far that the knife handle disappeared in his fat belly because he was a real fat guy. Then he locks the door and leaves and everybody that comes to the door knocks on the door. They think he's in there meditating. They think he's in there. Maybe it's in the evening. Maybe he's bathing. So nobody went in until finally they realized that this guy is, something's up. This guy's not coming out. And when they went in, they found this guy dead laying in the floor by Ehud. We know about Samson. Everybody heard about Samson. If I ask you this morning how many of you have ever heard of Samson, most everybody in here would have lifted their hand. Do you know the weapon that Samson used was the jawbone of a donkey? Picked it up and used it as a weapon. So Shamgar uses a wooden stick. It's about eight feet long. He pointed to the end, he pointed the end of it. It's what they would do. See, what this, what this stick was used for when the uh, farmers would, and, and that's what Shamgar was. He, he drove cattle. He had ox, and he would drive ox. And what he would do is sometimes they would get stubborn, and not like church people, of course, but he would get, they would get stubborn, and to get them moving again, he would take this long stick he had pointed on the end and shoved it into the rump of the, how you like it? I cleaned that up, right? I could have said the buttocks. He stuck it into the buttocks of the ox. The buttocks of the ox. Can we put that on a t-shirt? The buttocks of the ox. Ox go. Means you may not want to move, but you're going to move because if you don't move, I'm going to continue to stick this sharp stick into your buttocks. And finally, the ox would move. So that's what this was. The only difference in this ox gold than probably the other ones that other farmers used, he had taken metal and dipped it in the metal and made a metal point on it. So he made his own spear. Now, if you're probably wondering... Pastor, what in the world could we possibly learn on Father's Day from a guy who's only mentioned in the Bible in one verse? In fact, let's get real. It's only really two sentences. Two sentences, one verse. That's the only time this guy is mentioned. But let me tell you, I see in Chamgar the perfect example of what a father should be of what a man of God should be. He should be a champion. Did you hear me? He should be a champion. Can I tell you that one of the things that's happening in the world today is that if you look around, we are seeing a decline in attendance of young people. Statistics say something like this, that if both parents attend church regularly, and raise their kids in church from the time they're little bitty kids until they become young adults. If both parents, I don't mean just come here and there, but if both parents are actively involved in church, that 75, I'm sorry, 90% of children remain in church. The numbers go down if it's just one parent actively involved. In church. If it's only one parent coming to church, serving in the ministries, working in the church, dedicated and committed to the church, it's 75% chance your child will stay in church. But when both parents, follow me, when both parents don't attend regularly, you know, those people that come hit and miss here and there, the numbers drop to like 45%. But parents that was maybe in church themselves at one time, but no longer attend, maybe Christmas, maybe Easter, they show up. 
5% of those kids remain in church. I think we need some moms and dads who understand the value and the importance of bringing their children to church. Especially when you take, do you know (laughs) that your kids spend about, that our kids spend about 30 hours a week in school? 30 hours a week they go to school. When they get home, they spend another 30 hours watching TV, social media, playing their video games, whatever. You know how much time kids spend in church? Modern, up-to-date Statistics, this was done by the, the Barna Research Group. You know what, how many hours kids spend in church? One hour. One hour compared to 30 in school. And here's the problem. I don't know if you watch the news. I don't know if you keep up what's going on in the world. But what used to be taught in school is not what's being taught in school anymore. Things have really changed, honey. There is an agenda. It's the enemy's agenda. It's the devil's agenda. And that is to steal a generation of people. So a long time ago, we used to hear these strange teachings, these strange things that were taught in college university by liberal teachers, teachers who were anti-God, atheists, wanted nothing to do with religion, wanted all of that banned. They wanted the free speech stuff to be taken out of our Constitution where you don't have a right to come to church. That's their mentality, and that's their heart, that's their mindset, and they begin to teach that. You following me? They begin to teach that to our our. 18 and 19 and 20 year old until now they become parents themselves brainwashed by the teachings of the professors who were liberal in their thinking and in their philosophies and their beliefs and when those kids graduated college by they get married and they begin to have children and then those children are influenced by the teachings of that parent who no longer bring them to church, who no longer tell them the things about God. You know what I'm tired of? You know what I'm sick of? I'm sick of watching young people be raised in church, go off to a college university and be twisted and be mind brainwashed from the teachings that we instilled upon them in the church. And here's the problem. We don't bring our kids to church enough anymore so they don't have a clue what we really believe in. Happy Father's Day. I'm being serious today. I'm going to step down a minute. I want to get my phone real quick because I want to, I want to read something to you. I'll get preaching in a minute. I promise. Here's what grandparents said. We used to attend church six week to six week tent revivals, seven nights a week. Anybody remember those days? I, I do. Not, I don't remember them as an adult, but I remember them as a kid. And then here's the parents of, of those grandparents. We used to attend Sunday through Wednesday revivals at our church. And then here comes the next generation. We used to attend church occasionally on Sunday morning. And then the next generation of children says, well, we used to attend church on Mother's Day and Easter. Let's throw Christmas in there. And here's what the future generation, the grandchildren, here's what they say. Watch church. Watch church. When you add to that, that what I told you was being taught in colleges is no longer at the college level, but now they've brought it down into the elementary level. And if you've been watching the news, you heard about all of the hubbub that went on in Florida with Disney World and all of that stuff, and people, because they're saying like, oh, no, they're very rational. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you what happened. Is we got these whacked out, yeah, you can quote me on that, whacked out, stupid, 
retarded teachers who decided that it would be okay to teach a kindergarten kid or a first grade kid what transgender is all about and on gender identity. How do you identify? You know the new senses that will be coming out in a few years for the next election? You know one of the questions is no longer are you a man or are you a woman? It is what gender do you identify as? I tell you, we live in a mixed up crazy world. And we're losing our children. And we're losing our youth. And we're losing our future generations. To the things of the world. The teachings of the world. The beliefs of the world. See, Shamgar was a part of the Israelites. There was a small little village, Jeannie. There wasn't a big population of people that lived there. They didn't have any walls around their city for defense. But they were wide open, wide open to the enemy to come in. And so those who put in gardens would plant gardens. They would till the ground. They would plant the seeds. And they would water and they would hoe and all the things you do to take care of a garden so that you have a crop, so that when it's harvest time, you can go out and harvest, whether it be wheat or whether it be, in my case, tomatoes or whatever you grow in your garden. There's a harvest time, and right about the time it was harvest, the Philistines would come in. They wouldn't come in and steal the harvest. they just come in and messed up the plant. They just run their horses and their chariots through the gardens and through people's property. They would come in if someone was traveling, they were a business person and they had money on them and they were traveling. They would catch them along the side of the road. They would beat them up, sometimes kill them and steal whatever they had from them. People lived in fear. People lived with a lot of stress and anxiety. The the people were just like, when when are they going to come in again? When are they going to come in and steal what we've planted? When are they going to come in and take what we've worked so hard for? And most of them stood back and watched it happen. Kind of like the church has. Uh Uh-oh. Did I say that out loud? Kind of like the church has. We have watched the enemy come in and steal our most prized possession, and that is our future generation, the next church. When you couple that with parents who don't seem the necessity or don't seem the the need to be there every time the doors are open, and so instead of being taught at least one hour a week, the things of God, they get 60 hour a week of everything else and nothing for God. And then when our kids become drug addicts and alcoholics, when our kids end up in crime, they end up just lost, poor, broke, just destitute, can't stay married, can't keep a relation, all the problems that our kids have, we stand back and go, I don't know what happened. I'll tell you what happened. We stood back like the people in this little community and said, there's nothing we can do about it. Until finally a guy by the name of Shamgar, who had watched this time and time again. He had seen this happen over and over and over again. And this time, Tom... He said, I'm not going to run anymore. I'm not going to stand by and watch everything I've worked for get destroyed. No more. I'm done. He grabbed him a stick, pointed the tip, dipped it in a little metal, and he stood in the middle of this pea patch. And he said to those around him, the Philistines, come on, big boy. Come on, I'm ready for you. I'm ready for you. 
Because I've, I've come to stand in the middle of my pea patch. I've come to tell you I'm not leaving my pea patch anymore. And here come one or two. Whack, whack. He hit him with the stick. Fell dead to the ground. Here come ten at a time. Woof, woof, woof. You could hear the noise of the stick flying like a sword. And ten more are dead on the ground. Here comes some more at him. And they're riding in. And he cuts them up with his ox goat, his stick. Now there's a fifty. Now there's sixty. Now there's seventy. Now there's a hundred laying on the ground. He's thinking to himself, I may not go home tonight. I may not get to. <laughs> but I'm not going to stand here and let them take any more of what I have worked to raise. When are we going to have some shamgars? When are we going to have some fathers who will stand up in their homes and say, no more. I'm tired of losing generations. I'm tired of losing young people. I'm tired of watching people be raised in church and then when they get 18, 19 years of age they begin to go other places and they get involved in other stuff and the enemy sitting back going ha, ha, ha. you can't feed something that don't show up at feeding time you can't teach someone that won't show up when it's time for teaching and that's what we've done in the church. I'm talking to dads, but I'm talking to everyone. Dads, it's your, you know you are the priest of your home? You are the spiritual leader of your house? It is your responsibility to make sure those children... You will give an account one day of what you did with those children in your life. How you taught them and how you raised them. How you brought them up to know the things of God. The question I have for you today, are you a shamgar? Are you like everybody else in the town who just stand back and watch the enemy come in? Steal, kill, and destroy. Shamgar, there's 70. Now there's 80. He's still out there fighting. And he's fighting. Now there's 100 dead. Now there's 200 dead. Lori, there's 400 dead. They're all with this one guy and one stick. Why in the world, how, let me say, how in the world could this one guy, I don't think the Bible doesn't tell us a lot about him, whether he was like trained for battle. We don't know if he was a military guy. I don't think so. I think he raised ox. That's what he did. He had a pea patch. He was a farmer. That's what he did. We don't know if he was a big muscle guy. We don't know if he was six foot eight or whatever. We don't know if he was a big, tough looking guy like Daryl is over here. We don't know any of that. Or like Randy, who sings on the worship team. Who's, you ever, go up and grab Randy by the arm sometime. You can't can't squeeze it. It's muscle. You can squeeze this. You know, some people say they got an inch to pinch. I've got a slab to grab. <laughs> but don't you dare, Emily, tell me I'm not in shape because I'm in shape. Round is a shape. And I'll argue that till I die from being overweight and diabetic diabetes. I wonder if my doctor ever watches this stuff. Glenn came in this morning and said, I've lost three more pounds. And Cindy's not liking it. She's saying that my, something might be wrong. Why am I losing this weight? I said, well, if I make her feel better, tell her I've gained three pounds. Because Mark Lowry says there's so much weight in the world. It's like there's like so much weight and it's spread out over all the people in the world. So when somebody dies and they weigh 200 pounds, somebody's got to pick up that 200 pounds. 
Or if somebody loses 10 pounds, somebody else has got to pick up that 10 pounds they've lost. And it's usually me. If somebody gains weight, that means somebody else has lost some weight. That's what Mark Lowry says. I, he's not a Bible teacher or nothing like that. It's not like, I don't think you could, you know, I don't know. Fauci may be able to sell it, but I don't think anybody else could. Anyway, there you, I said that, didn't I? So Shamgar, 400, 500 dead. How in the world could a guy who had no military training, who wasn't a fighter, he wasn't a member of the army, who come home like Rambo ready to take on 600 men by himself with only a stick, how in the world could he defeat because it went from 400 to 500, 600 men, which, by the way, is a brigade, a, brigade, a brigade. How in the world could he? Because, see, we serve a God who's looking for people who will just say, here I am, Lord, use me. We serve a God who is saying, I will use you if you make yourself available to me. And Shamgar said, God, use me and my stick. David said, use me and my sling. Samson said, use me and the jawbone of a donkey. Are you getting it? Are you picking up what I'm trying to get? All God's looking for is somebody who will stand up when the enemy keeps coming in and that will stand up and say, I'm not leaving my pea patch anymore. I'm not going to give up what I've worked hard to raise anymore. But instead, I'm going to stand my ground and I'm going to fight the enemy. And I just, I, I like the picture I, I got this crazy imagination. Ask people that know me. I'm a crazy guy. I have a crazy imagination. I have this vision of God up in heaven. And when, when he finds a David or a Samson who's willing to stand up and fight for what they know is right and what they believe in, I can just see God. I, can, can you guys follow me to the top? Because I've got to get the, 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 the aerial view here. Follow me, Matt, if you will. So I can see God sitting up in a throne in heaven. Remember, he's high and lifted up. He's above everything. There's nothing, there's nothing above him. Everything is beneath him. And I can just see, because, I mean, this stuff is, goes on all the time. All this kind of crazy stuff is happening all the time. And here is... They're, they're, they see the Philistines come in. And see, here's the problem. The people of, in this village and the people of Israel had turned their back against God. And now they're asking God to s deliver them. Help them. And God's heard their cry. But he says, I'm looking for someone who will stand up. I'm looking for someone. And all of a sudden, I, I don't know, Jesus probably goes, Check this dude out. He's got a stick. And okay, and everybody, all the angels, everybody's vision. Look at this. He's in the middle of a pea patch all by himself. And the only thing he has in his hand is a stick. And look, here comes this mighty army of 600 men. Remember Gideon? Remember Gideon? When he first called men to go to battle, there was over 33,000. But by the time he went to the war, there was 300. And yet, the plan that God gave him to use, which used some pictures with lights in them, and then when they busted them, this bright light shined all around the the Midianite army, and all of a sudden, they think they're surrounded by this great army, but it's only 300 men. 
Because God's looking for a Gideon. God's looking for a Samson. God's looking for a David. He's looking for a Shamgar who'll stand up in the middle of their pea patch and say, I'm tired of the enemy stealing and taking what belongs to me. I'm tired of them coming in and bringing destruction into our hearts, our lives, and our homes. And God says, check this dude out. I like this guy. (laughs) I like him. He's not very tall. He's not even very muscular. Wow. He's just a kind of a short, dumpy guy. Oh, I mean, that's me. <laughs> I, I got lost. Shamgar, Shamgar. That's what. No, I'm, I'm looking at this guy. Gray hair. Don't move like he used to move. That describes some of the grandfathers, some of the older guys in the room today. God's looking for someone who will stand up and say, use me. Use me. And if you'll stand up and say, God, use me, God will use you. And he'll use whatever you have available to be used. I can just see here, here they come, 600 men, one by one, one, one here, and they'll fall and fall And I'm, I'm going to just say this. I don't believe Shamgar was in that pea patch by himself. Now, to the natural eye, to your eye, to my eye, it was one guy fighting with a stick. But I believe if you could have ripped open the heavens, you would have seen a mighty army. A mighty army. Because let me, let me take you to a story real quick, and I'm going to hurry because I'm about done, I promise. Take you to a story. Elisha, you know, he's the one that replaced Elijah. And Elisha has been telling the king of Israel the plot of the enemy of Syria. And the king of Syria gets mad, and he says, someone's a traitor. Somebody's a traitor in our camp. Somebody's telling the Israelites, where we're going to set up and push them. And so every time we get there, they're not there. Well, it was Elisha. God was revealing these things to him. And all of a sudden now, he says, go get Elisha. And he goes to a place called Dothan. And there's Elisha and his servant. Now, we don't know the servant's name, so we're just going to call him Fred. Because I like Fred. So Elisha and Fred... Get up early in the morning, Fred says, I'm going to go outside and get some water to make us some coffee and make lunch or breakfast or whatever. And so Elisha takes his bu- or Fred takes his bucket. He goes outside and he gets to the pump, to the well, and he starts pumping the water into the bucket and he begins to look all around the hills that surround them. And they're like, whoa, check it out. There are horses and mighty men of, wow, soldiers and armor and, weapons and wow there's they're everywhere they're 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 surrounded us we oh and he drops his bucket and he runs back into the house and he goes elisha elisha you you got to come and see this because the all the hills around us is covered with this army the syrian army they've come for you (laughs) he's probably thinking so you go out there and let them have you (laughs) That's Fred. No. Elisha says, wait a minute, wait a minute. You have nothing to worry about. Now, I don't know about you. But I'm, I'm thinking if it's me and Fred, and there's 30,000, 40,000 men all around the hills, I'm beginning to think the words, don't worry about it, don't apply here. Because I would be pretty, I'd be like Fred. I'd be pretty freaked out right now. But Elisha says, greater is he that is for us than he that is against us. Now that's not the exact words. That's Gary's paraphrasing. But he's saying that the ones that are for us is mightier and greater than the ones that is against us. And Elisha goes, I mean Fred goes, one, two. (laughs) And there's 30,000. Let me count that again, in case you didn't catch it. One, two. Elisha, there's two of us and 30,000 of them. And God said, 
Elisha says, open his eyes so he can see. And he looked outside and he saw what he couldn't see before Elisha prayed that prayer. But now when he opened his eyes and he looked outside, he saw that right behind that great army of the Syrian, that right behind them was another army. But this wasn't your typical army. This was an army of God's angel band. This was God's army. <laughs> this is God's team. This is God's fighters. This is the angels that God sent. And he, they surrounded them. And so Elijah looks out and says, that's why I'm not panicking because I know the God that I serve is well able to give us victory. I know the God, that, that's why Shamgar could stand in the middle of a pea patch and say, I know, I know by myself and one stick, I can't do anything, but I know the God. How do I know? Because I've heard the stories of how God time and time and time again has moved mightily for his people, hallelujah. All he's looking for is somebody, somebody who will be a shamgar in the middle of a pea patch. That's all he's looking for. I wonder today, are there any shamgars in this room? Are there any shamgars in this church today? Are there any fathers? Or are there any mothers in this room today? He'll say, I'm tired of the enemy stealing everything I raised. Here's my favorite part of this story. As he's fighting these 600 men with his stick, you could hear him say this over and over and over. Now, the Bible doesn't say he said it. It's Gary's imagination that he says it. He's probably got pea pod vines because, you know, they've been fighting in this pea patch. He's probably got vines all over and there's pea pods everywhere he's probably picked up a few and stuck them in his pocket who knows but he says I refuse to go down I refuse to, to give up I refuse to surrender I refuse to turn my back and walk away I may go down but when I go down I'm going down with pea pods sticking in my pocket that's what God's looking for. He's looking for some men and women of faith who'll say, the enemy is coming in like a flood, bringing destruction. Jesus himself, John 10, 10, said the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But he didn't stop there, because that we wouldn't have nothing to shout about. But he went on to say, Pat, he said, but I've come to give you life, and not just life. I've come to give you life, and life more abundantly. Hallelujah. For greater is he who is with you than he who is against you. It's time for the church. Be the church. Come on. Yeah, it's time for the church to be the church. We need a voice in the wilderness. We need someone to speak up, whether it's an individual or it's a church. We need someone to say, yes, yes, I may go down, but when I go down, I'm going down with peapods sticking out of my pocket, but I refuse to walk away anymore. I refuse to turn my back on the future generation. I'm going to ask you to stand with me this morning. Because you see, the next thing you know, there's 600 dead Philistine soldiers. Soldiers that were armed, Daryl, with, they had armor on. They had swords. Man, they had riding horses, pulling chariots. 600. And one man stood there. With a stick. With a stick. With a stick. 
You know what most people would have done with the stick? They had to put a hot dog or a marshmallow on the end of it and roasted it. But not, but not Shamgar. Shamgar said, I've left my pea patch my last time. I've walked away. I've turned my, my hard labor, my work, everything I work, I've, I've turned it over year after year after year. I walk, just let them have it. But not this time. Too much fear, too much discouragement, too much depression in that community. Nope, not this time. I'm going to stand and I'm going to fight what belongs. Pastor, it sounds like you're calling us to take up arms and fight. I'm not telling you to take up a gun and fight. I'm telling you to take up the only sword we have. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. I'm telling you that we can fight not always standing up. Sometimes we do our best fighting on our knees when we're crying out to God. But let me tell you another way you fight. You make sure that your kids and your grandchildren are in church. That's another way you fight. So that you make sure that they're not only hearing about the liberal, crazy nonsense of transgender and all of these other things, but they're also Pride Month. June is Pride Month. Help me, Lord, help me. Are you wanting to say something? Huh? Go ahead. Right. Yeah. A drag queen story time. It's a story time. They did it already in Collinsville. Story time. Listen to me. This is a fact. This is the stuff that's going on in the world today. We've got, we've got, we've got, we've got to be the church in this hour that we live. We've got to be the refuge. We've got to be the, the safety, the place people come to. How many would say, Pastor, I want to be a Shamgar? Come on. I want to be a Shamgar. Now, I don't mean get a stick, go out and fight a bunch of people. I mean, start praying, start seeking God, reading the word, getting faithful to God's house, making sure that our kids, you know, have any of you guys ever asked, hey, what goes on over there in kids' church? We need to find out what's going on. And maybe you need to help. Maybe they need help over there. Those are areas in our church that we need Shamgars to stand up and say, hey, I'll be a part of that. Because I want to make sure the things that they're taught aren't just the things that the world teaches. Uh, uh, let me, I got to say this, and I'm going to be careful, and I'm sorry. I got to be careful. A few days ago, it's been a, been a while, maybe a week ago or so, Gracie, you know, she drives, got her little, she drives a grandma's car, but she drives, and she was in town, Granite City. And there was three or four, I don't even know if they were teenage girls, but they were right there at that age, and they were walking down the street, and they all had tagged a flag, a pride flag, onto their backs, on, on their clothes right here. They pinned like it was a cape, and they were walking down the street. And she told me who one of the girls were. It was a girl who used to come to this church, who used to sit in that Sunday school class, or that kids' church class. And when I think about it, I thought, well, yeah. Her mom and dad both have quit coming to church. They're no longer letting their kids hear messages like this or messages that could be taught. Why wouldn't we expect them to fall for that kind of stuff? Because we're not being the voice that needs to be heard. They're hearing another voice. And it's time they hear the right voice. And that's that Jesus saves. And Jesus loves and Jesus died for our sins. Amen? Hallelujah. Let's sing one today. I know I got him, but you can lift this up. Go ahead.
this confidence because I've seen the faithfulness of God the still inside the storm the promise of the shore I trust the power of your word Enough to seek your kingdom first Beyond the barren place Beyond the ocean waves When I walk through the waters I won't be overcome When I go through the rivers I will not be drowned My God will make a way So I promises you make there isn't one that is delayed so I will not lose heart here I will lift my arms and start to sing into the night my praise will call the sun to rise declare
I gotta brag on you guys. For a for a two two piece band and a one vocalist. You you guys rock this place today. Jesse, great, great job. Amen. 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 And we missed you last Sunday. Andrew did a fantastic job. But we always miss Sharon, her smiling face up there. Her corny sense of humor. Anyway. Well, let's just be honest. She's whacked. She's pretty well whacked. Um, we can say that. Um, hey, um, Tom wanted me to remind you guys uh, that on the table in the lobby, back as you're going out, where the candy table is, there's a sign-up sheet for Spaghetti Factory, which is next Saturday, correct? Huh? Well, this, I mean, the one, the one coming up. The next one coming up. We just passed one. We've got one coming up. It's the 25th. Yeah. That, right? And so we're leaving a uh, meeting here. If you want to meet here at 12, uh, if you want to drive straight to the spaghetti factory, that's fine, but we're planning on getting there about 12.30. So if you'd like to ride, you don't want to drive, you know, I mean, no gas prices are a little high right now. Not bad, a little high. Um, anyway, come and, and hook up with someone and, and ride with them. Uh, but if you'd want to go, if you say, I think I'm going, I'm, pr I'm planning on it, I don't care if you cancel me on Friday, I don't care. We'd least like to got it, have a number. It's easier to tell them we got less than it is to try to add more later. So go ahead and sign up uh, if you are interested in doing that. How's that, Tom? Did I do good? Thank you. Amen. Don't forget the blessing.